Well, this morning, Young Beans and myself have a beautiful kudu bull that was hunted. And we're going to run you through the process of actually getting this beautiful bull's skin off. Um, this bull was hunted about an hour, hour and a half ago. We've carried him out of the bush and we've arrived at the skinning shed. From here, I'm going to invite Jimmy in, uh, our tracker and skinner. And Jimmy's going to run us through a few um, methods that he likes to use and the cuts and how best to approach getting this skin off in the best possible way to give us a good end product. So what Jimmy is doing here right now is he's opening the hind quarters for us to hang this bull on the gantry in order to um, get you the various cuts and also get the bull to hang where the skin will naturally come off easiest. Jimmy's getting ready to start the skinning and do his cuts. A lot of our hunters often email us and ask us what they can bring along for the trackers. Right here is the tracker's best friend. What Jimmy's got here is the traditional Havilon knife. Um, it's probably their favorite thing in their entire skinning kit. They've got a bunch of homemade um, ear turners and things like that which, which play an integral part later in the process. But if you want to know what to bring a tracker before your hunt, Bring him a Havilon and bring him a bunch of spare blades. This stuff's like gold around here. What we've got here is this particular kudu is being skinned for a pedestal mount. So that means the shoulder mount, the cape, has to be cut further back. Now the traditional cape would probably be cut along this line somewhere around here. Not every kudu has the same lines on it. But in general you can work about a foot back from the, from the top of the shoulders. That's usually a good place kind of where to work uh, your cape from. In this instance, we've got the, um, the pedestal, which is much higher, closer to the rear and the back skin of the animal. This particular bull, we are not keeping the back skin, so it will only be the pedestal, which he'll encircle all the way, and then he's going to cut all along the top of this white line, going right down to the base of the skull. So once he's done that, the skinning and the removing of the skin from the main carcass will start. You'll notice what Jimmy's done is he's kind of extended the head, the nose right in, the horns right down to try and get this animal to stand or hang as, you know, as straight symmetrically as possible in order for him to get the best possible cut along the mane so that when the taxidermist stitches this, he can hide a lot of that stitching. Unlike North American game that has a really heavy pelt and, 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 and a lot more hair like a white-tailed deer or a mule deer, our animals, as you can see, there's very little hair. This animal has not had hair slip or anything like that. This is just what they naturally look like. They don't carry a lot of hair. It's a lot warmer in Africa, and with the heat, their coats are a lot slicker, a lot finer. Skins come off from the body now. We have we, we, we've caved it right to the head, and now the final stages of the case can take place. Jimmy's now going to make his incisions from the base of the skull to right between the horns, and then from there he's going to peel the skin off completely from the skull itself. The final stages will be turning the ears, the lips, nose, and eyes. Okay, that's really important. Um, in the drying process it goes, or thinned out as much as possible and giving the salt the best opportunity to dry out every single inch of the skin. Jimmy's going to use this unique tool. Um, it's a homemade device, it's something that our trackers have been doing for 40 years. It's a piece of wire, they, they use a hammer, they hammer down the tip of this and they kind of shape it into a T-shape and they take a uh, rubber tire and wrap it as a handle and what this does is once the ears turn they will use this to remove the skin from the main cartilage within the ear lobe 
and that will remove and turn that hair completely. So fairly simple, but very unique and very effective. Probably one of the most important pieces of equipment after Jimmy's knife in this process. While Jimmy behind us is finishing the caping, we've got Corky and Saki are taking off the back guide. In this instance, we won't be using the back guide, but we're cleaning the meat now, taking out the insides, the intestines, as well as the offal. Um, from here, the meat will hang for 14 days in our pool room, our meat locker, um, where the meat will be um, shared amongst us and our staff here, and uh, probably the best and healthiest meat you can enjoy. So what's happening now is Jimmy's giving the skin a good wash now, the cape's done. It's the final stages of cleaning, getting as much blood off as possible and using a hard broom and, and, a good, and good water pressure gets off a lot of that excess blood. From here it will drip dry a little bit and then we'll head to the salt shed. What Jimmy's doing here is he's preparing the surface, obviously the wooden base. He's going to put on a layer of salt and then he's going to lay his skin on top of this and then start salting the skin on top of this. So what we're trying to do now is we're trying to spread the skin open as much as possible to make sure that when we're salting there's absolutely no fold or crevice that actually um, doesn't get salt. Every single square inch of this skin must get salt. Jimmy's now gonna put some salt onto the skin and then we're gonna start rubbing it in. And it's quite important that when the salt gets onto the skin, it is not merely just dumped on the skin and that is that. We actually have to take our hands and rub the salt in. A good rub all over forms a bit of a brine on the skin, which obviously aids in the drying process of all those little nooks and crannies and crevices where the, you might not get the salt whipped into 100%. But the water mixing with the salt creating that saline solution is what's helping. The nose, eyes and ears, some of the most important parts to work the salt into. Extra care goes into this particular area of the skin. Now you may ask why we salt the skins. In layman's terms, if I can give you a bit of a demonstration here, clean a bit of salt off my hands. If we take this blade of grass, and we imagine the hair follicle sits like that. Inside of that, the, um, the hair follicle, where the hair is sticking out, 
What happens with the salt process? It dries out, it forms a tight noose around the hair follicle, which is the piece of a blade of grass. Now we cannot pull it out. If we do not get salt onto the skin, this will be loose, hair will fall out, and we'll have hair slip. Once the salting has been completed, we're going to let these skins rest for three to four, even possibly five days, depending on the climatic conditions. Um, if it's wet, we'll leave them in a bit longer. If it's drier, we'll take them out a bit sooner. But we'll be back to show you a little more.